Welcome to Sarah Gonzalez Unfiltered. We've got uh, a lot to get into today, including reboot Mitch McConnell deciding to uh, step down as the party leader. Now, you know, not he's not going to go totally away, but he will at least step down. I'm sure it's been embarrassing uh, having the blue screen of death uh, come across his face mid-sentence several times. But before we get into the rest of the, uh, the news of the day here... Um, I am joined by my friend. I can call you a friend now, Steve. Steve Baker. He is Blaze Media's investigative reporter. Is that is that accurate? Would you like to be known as friends with me? I, I, I would much rather do that than otherwise. Okay. All right. Good. It's funny. I hear that a lot. People are like, well, pff, remind me to never piss you off. Um, so I... I Welcome, Steve, to the program. Thank you. I wish that I was having you on for a uh, happier reason, but it turns out yesterday um, you publicly announced that you are to self-surrender to the FBI on Friday, where they are going to, uh, I guess, arrest you, book you, take you through the whole humiliation process and all of that, but they still, this is all for the January 6th reporting. That's correct. But they won't tell you what you're being charged with. Is that correct? That also is correct. They have not told us yet. They're, they're operating right now under the technicality that my charges are still under seal until that seal is broken on Friday morning when I am quote unquote, arrested. So that's not the way they handled me two and a half years ago. When they first were going to charge me back in November of 21, the uh, assistant U.S. attorney, speaking to my attorney, actually gave us the charges uh, that they were going to charge me with at the time. Which I feel like is, I mean, I'm not a legal expert, but I, isn't that like kind of the point? Isn't that the process is that you have to tell someone what they're being charged with again technically no not until the moment of the arrest and they're playing this game with me because obviously i have i've not been too kind to them over the last couple of years myself (laughs) well i would say it's more of just exposing bad behavior rather than you know i like to look at it that way yeah being being unkind but so so walk us through exactly what you did on january 6th where were you what did you, you know, what what did you or can you, I guess, is the question. Oh, I, I mean, I mean, I know you didn't do anything wrong, but I want but I want you I, I just want the viewers to understand how egregious this is that yeah. you are being asked to self-surrender to the FBI for something. We don't know what something that you did supposedly on January 6th that would warrant an arrest. So I just I, I, I want you to tell people what it is that you were doing. I know why you were there. I know what you were doing, but tell people what it is that you were doing because I want you to set the stage. And then I want to go through all of the things that you've exposed in the meantime, leading up to this self-surrender. Well, when the charging documents do come out and they are unsealed yeah. on Friday, I'm, I, I think they'll probably tell the world that I was raping and pillaging my way through the Capitol. <laughs> but obviously- Steve. <laughs> uh, but see, we, we've had a bit of an advantage even over, and, I, and I, look, I, I don't apologize just to, to all the other uh, souls that have been, you know, and lives that have been wrecked by yeah. this process. But I've had a bit of an advantage in that I have had access to the Capitol CCTV viewing room more so than just about any other journalist. Maybe more so than anybody when you add into the fa- into it the, the the number of man hours with other Blaze analysts who have gone there with me. So we've had a lot of time. And one of the things and one of the little projects that we embarked upon was we harvested all of the Capitol CCTV of me mm. in a building. Mm. So whatever they say in those charging documents, and they tend to be hyperbolic, they tend to be, you know, five, 10, 12 times worse than what the behavior was of the, of the defendant. But that's what they do because they try to scare that defendant into a quick plea deal. And then they get their notch in the gun belt. They get their, you know, extra uh, convictions for towards their promotions and uh, up the ladder in the department of justice, such as that. 
but we're not going to let them get by with that in my case. Yeah. So what I did in the building is I walked through with a camera, with a tripod, with a backpack, and I documented what was happening inside the building. That's what I did that day. Which you would think if the left truly saw this as like an assault on democracy and the day the, that democracy died and worse than 9-11 and Pearl Harbor and all of these other things, you would want a journalist to document this horrible, horrific scene of these savages, as you put out, p- uh, put it, raping and pillaging all of the, you know, they're just completely desecrating the Capitol. Like you, wouldn't you want, if if it truly was that horrific, you would want it to be documented, right? No, like, no, they, they, no, they only want um, journalists from the New York Times, the Washington Post, the New Yorker. Ah, but if yes. somebody is an independent libertarian journalist, not so, or works for the blaze. Mm, that's a great point. Yep. Because there were journalists from those, some of those mainstream outlets there that day. What we know is that right at, give or take, uh, a, a, a handful of fingers, 60-ish independent journalists, uh, mainstream journalists, credentialed journalists, uncredentialed journalists of all types, stringers, uh, every form of journalist mm-hmm. went through the doors or windows that day. And the only ones that we've identified up to this point who have been charged with anything are those who reported the story uh, contrary to the approved narrative. If you were Luke Mogelson, who uh, contributes to The New Yorker, and you you went through a broken window Mm. with your cell phone camera, and then you captured uh, the QAnon shaman inside the Senate praying and doing his thing. And then the title of your story that came out, ran by the New Yorker, was Among the Insurrectionists. That was your get out of jail free card mm. because his narrative comported with the approved narrative of the day. And of course, my first story didn't necessarily comport. I saw other things that were going on. And so as a result of that, I've been a target for three years now. Yeah, so so let's let's talk about that then. So Steve Baker goes to the Capitol on January 6th and, thank God, documents what he does uh, and then goes on to be threatened by, by the government. But in the meantime, you are going in and finding um, you have prove you have proven perjury mm-hmm. on behalf of Capitol Police. Uh, You have discovered that CCTV cameras were moved during the detonation of this supposed pipe bomb that we were told was viable. Um, You I mean, like what are what are some of the things that I'm I'm, that I'm missing that you've I mean, you've exposed all sorts of things that make you go hmm in relation to what happened at the Capitol that day. the, The most important thing and I think the thing that they fear the most is that as we continue to pull the thread. Mm hmm on this thing and and the document or the or the the not the document but the the the, the clothing begins to you mm-hmm. know mm-hmm. come apart mm-hmm. um this is leading us to the source of the setup of January 6 and most of the work that I've done I would say over the course of the last two and a half, two years in particular, have been has been directed at the Capitol Police and the corruption within Capitol Police leadership. But see, that's getting too close mm-hmm. because they are just the agents of um, cover up for the real source. Yeah. So what are you what what are you gonna what are you gonna do? What are you gonna are you gonna work with them? Are you gonna plea down? Are you gonna like what what is the plan? Or can you even tell me? I don't and please feel free to say, like, I can't yeah. say at this time if I ask something no, that's I, going I, too I, far. Obviously, there's nothing that I can say right now that I probably haven't already said. Yeah, right. I've written millions of words on yeah, this already. Yeah, so yeah. Th- whatever they're gonna hang me Which with. I'm not sure if your attorney's happy with you on that no, or not. No, no, no. <laughs> No, he 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 has chastised me more in the last two days than he yeah. he has in the last several that. months. Yeah. But the the reality is is that I'm not going to go you know quietly into the good night. I'm not going to be silent about these things. So to answer your question specifically, we really don't know what the strategy is going to be going forward until first of all we learn who my judge is going to be in DC mm. because that's a big deal. It, the the judges for all of the January six defense is supposed to be uh, allocated on a kind of a lottery basis. Mm-hmm. 
but yeah. who knows? You know, right. I, I, I don't know if that's going to happen in my case or not. And we've seen other other examples where I'm not so sure it was a lottery basis. But that's the way it's supposed to be. And then uh, once we know that, then we know the, the, the type of defense that we can strategize and build. Uh, I will tell you right now, and I don't mind saying it publicly because I've already said it far too many times, I, I'm well on the record, we're going to prosecute this case in the court of public opinion mm-hmm. long before this thing ever goes to trial, if it goes that far. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I, I just... <laughs> I don't know how anyone can deny that this is clearly um, a warning shot that journalists can either get with the program and repeat the narrative that the federal government determines is worthy, or they can potentially have their lives ruined Mm. and end up in prison, federal prison, for bogus charges. I mean, that that seems to be what your case that 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 is what they're doing with your case specifically. My my case is is just an egregious example of selective prosecution, as we were talking about before, because they are not charging certain people for doing the same behaviors that I did going in as a journalist. I had been a writer for 25 years. This is not this was not a, a surprise to anybody. Certainly not a surprise to any of my readers why I was there. Furthermore, they knew that I was not a Trump supporter. I'm you know I'm a pretty flaming libertarian and 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 they knew that I was there to document the spectacle. I had no idea what the spectacle would become. Right. Um and 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 look, do I do I have uh problems with the federal government? Do I have problems with the, the what I call the darkness underneath that dome of the Capitol? Uh yes. And I've said that on camera. I've said that on on mainstream news that day. I've said that very thing. Uh but that is my opinion. That is my opinion, not there as a um, parading, flag-waving Trump supporter, but but as a believer in the foundation and the founding principles of this country. And, and so I'm just commenting after the fact. But when we got to the Capitol, and I was there with another writer, right. a very successful writer, and, and I was there to document, as I said, not knowing where the story would go, but I followed the story where the story went, just yeah. by instinct. Yeah. Not with you know foreknowledge, not with um, uh, a uh, pretense of of going in and overthrowing the government or anything of the of the sort. Right. So, how are you feeling emotionally? I, I have my moments. Mm-hmm. Um, this is this is going to be a new experience. I. Uh, <laughs> That's one way to put it, Steve. Well, you know, this is a little bit beyond the worst crime I've ever committed, which is you know speeding. Um, <laughs> And, and, you know, or, or some unpaid parking tickets over the years, probably that that's, that's it. Yeah. And so I'm, I've never had to be fingerprinted before. I've never had to do the mug shot before. Uh, this, this is going to be new. Um, the department of justice has decided that in my case this time that they're going to go the humiliation route mm-hmm. and they could have issued me just a, just a, a you know, a, um, an appearance order. And I could have showed up in a, you know, suit and tie and I could have gone in, stood before the magistrate, heard what my charges were going to be, pled not guilty, found out whatever its restrictions they were going to put on me at the time, and then walked out of there with my attorney and, and come back here to blaze uh, mm-hmm. studios. That's what should have happened. But instead, they have decided now that they have issued not a order to appear, but an actual arrest warrant. So I'm going to voluntarily be arrested. So I'm going to go to the FBI field office here in Dallas on Friday morning at 7 a.m. We were informed that I need to show up, no kidding, in shorts and flip-flops. Why? It's easier to change into the orange jumpsuit and leg chains, Sarah. Oh, my God. Steve. Yes. So, so we know what they're going to do. Um, my attorney does not like me quoting him, but he's already chastised me uh, today just for this very thing that I'm about to say, and it's already on the public record, so, I'm, <laughs> so it's too late. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to say it anyway. Is I asked him, why are they doing this to me? And he said, you know why. You've been poking them in the eye for three years. Mm. So this is despite the fact that we have been cooperative since day one, since the very first phone call that I received in July of 21, uh, when the uh, special agent 
called me and said, introduced himself as being an FBI special agent. And I, my first thing that I ever said to the FBI was, what took you so long? Oh my gosh, Steve. Um, so I want to do this. If you can stay and hang out, I'd like for you to stay because you're, I'm sitting here and we're talking and I feel like I'm about to cry because I'm so upset at what's happening to you. And I'd like to be able to like have some laughs with you before you get arrested. Can we do that? that. (laughs) Okay. All right. Let's do that. And then I do want to say, um, before I forget to say this later, uh, we're going to try to have you on Friday after all of this ordeal, as long as the timing works out for you. So those of you who uh, tune in every day or don't, make sure that you tune in um, on Friday so that we can talk to Steve about what all of that experience was like, more about his charges, um, whatever you're able to tell us at that time. So we're going to try to do that on Friday as well. Um, so let's go ahead and let's let's take a quick break and then we're going to be back with a, something a little lighter. We'll be right back. All right, joining us here at the table, we have Jason Buttrell, chief researcher of the Glenn Beck program, along with Yaku Buyans, Blaze TV contributor and host of The Bottom Line. Thank you guys for being here. Um, after talking about what the FBI is doing to Steve, let's. I was like, Steve, you need to stay, and we need to like start talking about something a little light. Let's make light of uh, what's going on today, because now I'm pissed. Um, so let's talk about Mitch McConnell who just announced today that he is going to be stepping down in November as the Senate Republican leader. Now, he's not totally leaving. He Mm. is going to finish out his term, uh, which ends in January 2027, I believe. And it's been quite a long run for him. He's been in the Senate since 1985. (laughs) And uh, the longest serving Senate leader in history has been in party leadership uh, in the position for 17 years. Now, I want I want to uh, read a quote here from his colleague, Josh Hawley of Missouri, who said, Mitch McConnell is the least popular politician in America of either party. He is a symbol of everything that's wrong with Washington. So seems like they're, uh, Josh Hawley, anyway, is not too terribly broken up about Mitch McConnell uh, reboot stepping down. Um, but what's interesting has been seeing John Cornyn, <laughs> who... I mean, he he even told a, re- a reporter today, I've made no secret that I obviously want that job, but I'm not going to announce any sort of run for it right now. And he released this like gigantic ex post about how grateful he was to Mitch McConnell and how amazing he did and uh, blah, 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 blah. And so, you know, now it's going to be John Cornyn running for it. <laughs> that's, that's like when you're like, yes. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. You're like. <laughs> We're going to do. No, no, <laughs> no. Went from worst no. to really bad. Yeah. And yeah. The probably underneath him is probably not much better either. I can't think of anyone that would have the support or seniority to take that job that would be actually I'd like to good. see it. I'd like to see it stay uh, in Kentucky with uh, Rand Paul. Paul. That's yeah. what I was thinking. That too. would be my choice. That's, that would be awesome. That would be yeah, so, so would, epic. Yeah, I don't see that happening. I don't think it will. I, no, just because. You know, and someone recently, you and I were at an event, and you'll figure out who it is. Someone high up in politics made a statement and said, well, that person doesn't have seniority. And that whole notion Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. of rising the rank in the party and then batter up, you're next up, is so sick. Right. It's what's wrong with the system. Cornyn. Well, you have to be 80 or above. (laughs) Mark my words. Mark my words. Cornyn won't even be able to hold his own Senate position in 2026. He's up for re-election in 2026 Mm -hmm. because they alternate. Mm -hmm. Uh, Half of the Senate is up now. Ted Cruz is running now. Cornyn is next. He's not even going to represent Texas. So he's not sitting up there. Maybe for a minute. Don't tease us with that amazing news. Don't Don't threaten me with a good time. (laughs) I know. I already know who's who's who's. Tip their hat, they're gonna run against him and they're really? gonna, yeah, yeah, yeah. They're gonna wipe the floor. The guy needs to go. Look, Please. the guy needs to go. So maybe they put him in there for like a haymaker for a year, but 2026, he's tickets. Yaku, that's like telling me I'm getting an amazing 
birthday gift, but not coming. telling me what the birthday gift is. <laughs> no, the birthday gift is coming. The hey, end that's of what's 2026. happening to me. <laughs> Listen, <laughs> no, 2026, Cornyn is done. And on your case, there's people watching this show. You've lost your mind saying, I'm working for the FBI. Have you seen those kind of comments? No. You're sick and demented. We do cannot stand the FBI on this show. There are good people in the FBI, but the hierarchy is corrupt. No, Cornyn's going to go. He's going to go. You'll see. If I find out that any Fed boys have snuck into Blaze and infiltrated my show, I'm going to be so pissed off at you guys. I mean, they're everywhere else. Why right. wouldn't they? I think you just got to assume You see how none of us take you seriously right now. I have been accused on the phone today. Oh, my gosh. Oh, no. Working for a CCP-backed yeah. company. Yeah. Yeah. No. That happened first phone call I got this morning. Yeah. No. No. Oh my god. It's a daily thing, but that was oh my that was uh, how I started today. Oh my gosh. Okay. Well, confirmed. <laughs> no Fed boys here. Uh, at least not on this show. I can't speak for anybody else. But uh, I just going back to this this Senate thing. It really is like I saw Matt Gates tweeted out. He said um, we eighty six uh, McConnell, mm -hmm. McCarthy, and then and McDaniel. Mm -hmm. Ronna Romney McDaniel. Like, That's a good one. Mm. All three of those are, those are all really positive steps if we can follow through with someone that actually will do what. That's the problem. I know. Because, well, yeah, Mike, Mike Johnson was a surprise. Uh, he certainly yeah. wasn't in the lineage of the hierarchy to, to step into the speakership, right. but he tweeted uh, with regards to McConnell this afternoon. He said, no other Senate leader has done more to shape the judiciary than McConnell has. And I, I responded to him. I said, Mr. Speaker, you realize that's an insult, right? Yeah. <laughs> you know that, right? right. Yeah. <laughs> Look, you could shape something. Positive or negatively, he just said mm -hmm, shape. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but that doesn't mean it was positive. Yeah, and, Look, he, and he did probably keep... did good work at one point somewhere way back when we didn't have wheels. Right. You know, <laughs> and, and McConnell kept Merrick Garland from being. He did. Know, he does have. He to, does deserve credit. Sure. Seated on the Supreme Court. So to that, yeah, here we go. Mm -hmm. yeah. Give him that. You yeah. can. You can tell uh, every single. This is the most infuriating thing. Uh, who, who was the who was the one that uh, all, who got nominated for uh, for speaker that we really wanted? Who the heck was it? Now I can't Scalise. remember. Byron Donalds. Scalise. It was was it Scalise? Jim, Jim Jordan. Oh, Jim Jordan. 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 Then Scalise. Then Jordan. And then of course we have the Mark. person that you that that we know will you know provide the most amount of change or be the yeah. most effective and yeah. really go after it is always the person the establishment will never let in. Yeah. yeah. Every single time. But I will tell you, regarding Jim, I'm glad he's still where he's at because he's a bulldog. Where he is right now, the way he's going after things, I mean, you kind of, it's that whole, I was in Florida this past week and Floridians are saying, look, we would have liked DeSantis as president, but man, we, we did not want to lose him as a governor. Mm -hmm. And I was with leadership of, of their movement in, in, you know, in Naples, Florida. And, and I understand that when you replace a guy, like when McConnell goes, so you talk about two senators, I'm going to say it again, Cornyn's going, McConnell's going, you got to replace them. Who did you say Cornyn was being replaced with again? I didn't. Oh, okay. <laughs> nice try. <laughs> Look, I was born at night, just not last night. <laughs> <laughs> that was a valiant effort. That's what he said. I'll just ask him later. Well, Off camera. So, okay. so you mentioned bulldogs. Uh, so let's. I want to touch on the Michigan primary, which happened last night. Speaking of bulldogs, Donald Trump uh, won his sixth presidential uh, primary contest with nearly seventy percent of the vote to Nikki Haley's. I believe it was like twenty six point six percent of the vote in Michigan. Makes perfect sense for her to stay in. I, I totally get it, right? You know, it's obviously. Well, it does when it does when you're bought and paid for, um, and you have a bunch of rhinos who are just waiting for Donald Trump to be thrown in prison. That's it. That's got to be it. Uh, uh, not justifiably so, right? Like they're they're just chomping at the bit. Steve, they're just chomping at the bit for the uh, weaponization of the judicial system mm. uh, to be, you know, uh, to happen against this man. Throw him in prison, lock, a, uh, lock him up, throw away the key, and then have Nikki trot out there and be like, did someone call me for something? No, we still don't like you. Go home. <laughs> uh, look, I think we covered it on the show. If we didn't, I want to say this. There's something interesting going on. We know she's funded by the left. Why would she stay in? 
there's little little you know chirps about her running unaffiliated. Mm-hmm. She said that in her speech. When we thought I was here, Eric, I think Eric July was here. No, no, it was John Doyle. And we said, hey, we thought she was going to say, look, I'm out of the race. And she said, you know, I will have no labels. She mm-hmm. said that in her speech. And think about this. If when Trump, Super Tuesday, gets nominated, and he will, if she runs independent, which she could, it's, it's not good. It's, it's problematic for the movement. You've got the never Trumpers that we... We need them to wake up and show up. Based on the polls, numbers we just saw in Dallas, 1.3% of the GOP has turned out to vote in early voting. 1.3%. This is problematic. So I see a tactic from the left funding her. Stay in, stay in, run unaffiliated, go all the way to November. Do you think that that would end up being a mistake for them? Because I I hope. Well, in the primaries, I think we're seeing more Democrats vote for her than Republicans. Possibly. But those, and, and, but those and, are not Democrats that are going to vote for her if she stayed independent. Yeah. Like, they would yeah. vote for probably Joe Biden. You think? Yeah. yeah. Uh, well, I mean, yeah, I, I do. Because some, some of the other numbers for Michigan are, are, are problematic. Like, I think it was 101,000, what was it, unaffiliated votes yeah. went down for the Democrats yes. in this primary. Not good. Not good. I mean, that's basically the margin of yep. what gave Biden the victory in 2020. That's what we want. We want those votes. Yeah. Well, so, so it's like a contest is going for middle ground right now. And Nikki is, she said, I'll do it. Yeah. I'll do it. That, that, that is pretty crazy because they're, in, they're kind of locked in this weird, uh, I don't know, screwed if I do, screwed if I don't. Because I think that was mainly driven by the pro, you know, Palestine, you know, faction. You know, and there's a lot of, uh, Muslim immigrants, but it's like Dearborn, Michigan and stuff mm-hmm. like that. Um, so they primarily led that. But it's also, uh, they have a, a very big problem with the progressive left, like the hardcore progressive left and some of the things that Biden is doing or has not done. And uh, if he gives into them, let's say he does get it, well, he's going to lose a lot of moderates right. that gave him the right. victory right. back right. in 2020. Yeah. So I think right now they really don't know what to do. Yeah. Mm-hmm. It was so ridiculous. Biden, right before the primary, said, oh, I'm expecting a, you know, a ceasefire any day now um, you know, in, in Gaza. No, you didn't. Everybody else they talked to were like, well, what, we don't know what he's talking about. Israel didn't know what he's talking about. And no, no one knew what he was talking about. He just said that because he was trying to stave off what was going on. Uh, during the primary. That's it. I don't think they really know what they're going to do. They, they don't know how to handle the progressive faction. They don't know how to handle or keep some of the moderates. If they do go their way, they're kind of screwed there. So let's, let's, let, I know we got, we have to take a quick break. And then when we come back, I want to, I want to stay on this topic and um, kind of delve into this new poll that just came out with young voters, 18 to 34, that might, I don't know, it, may, it might be some encouraging news. Um, so we'll get into that when we, when we return. By the way, I keep forgetting. Um, So I am really bad. I said yesterday about self-promotion. And so yesterday I was like, oh, shoot, before I forget, I'm going to be on Megyn Kelly tomorrow. And then uh, my hit got pushed because they had like breaking stuff happen. So (laughs) I told I finally told my audience like, hey, watch for me on Megyn Kelly. And you're not going to I wasn't on. So (laughs) of course. Uh, And I'm sure next time I will forget to tell you guys. So (laughs) we'll just keep going with that. Uh, So back to the, the election. An Axios poll that was just released suggests that the gap may be closing between Donald Trump and Joe Biden in terms of favorability from young voters 18 to 34. So Donald Trump isn't winning them right now, but 52 percent said they would vote for Biden and 48 percent for Trump if the election were held today. To me, that's really high for Donald Trump. Like, I would not have expected 48 percent to say that they would vote for 18 to 34 I mean, it's high for any 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 conservative president. Even I think Bush, so. Even Bush didn't get those numbers back then. He didn't. But, but everything that has happened, can you imagine that still that demographic still somehow is 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 drinking the Kool Aid that yeah you yeah we'll vote for Joe Biden after after all this country has been through yeah. It's, it's interesting because people usually turn conservative once they get out of college, uh-huh. once they start making their own money. You mean once they look at their paycheck and go, yeah. wait, paycheck. I thought I was Pay supposed taxes. to be making this amount of money. Why is it so much lower? What? Yeah, yeah well, you know, it's so interesting on that. My son, for some crazy reason, they're actually doing 
like legitimate things that to teach kids now in some of these public schools, which is awesome, but it would just shock the heck out of me. Mm-hmm. But they had like a mock tax thing that he had to fill out his own taxes. Really? Yeah, it was insane. But he was like, wait, how much goes to medic? Wait, what? And he was like, wow. he was just freaking out. I was like, I tell you what. Wow. The great, the great hope that we have for those 18 year olds is that they now rebel against, uh, rebel against their millennial parents. And, and, and yeah, no do kidding. That because that's what we need them to do is like, yeah. okay, we're not going to be like you. We're going to, okay, let's, let's be like this other side. Right. Yeah, and, right. And, and I would hope that it was all this insane overreach, like what's happened to Steve. Like that's, that can't be, they got to be thinking about that, right? Like when they see everything happening to Donald Trump or when, mm-hmm. read, the, go, go to the uh, House uh, subcommittee on, uh, you know, uh, weaponization of government. I mean, they release stuff all the time. It almost never makes news or very little news. And it is shocking. Yeah. Like the Department of Homeland Security just spying on American citizens like right. it's no big deal. Yes. Getting around it and trying to hide it by going through private yeah. companies. Like what? In any sane world, any other time in history, there would be journalists like Steve that would be ma- that would make this a bombshell. Mm-hmm. Right? You'd see it in the front page of the New York Times. It would be, oh my gosh. That, no, it just goes past. No one talks about it. Yeah, I know Steve nailed it. It is the millennial, right? The, the boomer to the Xers, the Xers to the millennials, that whole phase of the millennials saying, look, the greatest thing you can do in life is to get a sociology degree and a quarter million dollars debt. Go do that. Mm -hmm. Trades are debt. Don't work Mm -hmm. trade. Bad jobs. Stigma. Don't build a nation. Outsource everything. Entitlement. It came from them. Mm -hmm. I hope they also wake up because I will tell you, they're responsible. Those parents are responsible. And it's in this hour where those parents need to have some real heart-to-heart talk with their kids and saying, hey, I know you can't see straight. 80% of it is my problem, okay, because I didn't do it right. But we we need to course correct real quick here. We've got, what is it, 10 months, you know? Maybe nine and a half months here to do something very quick, very fast to get this you know, country back on track. The interesting thing is alpha generation, which is 12 and under. That's alpha. It's funny that oh. they went, yeah, alpha. So it's, it's starting over from Gen yeah. Z to alpha yeah. is the next. And isn't that amazing? Because yeah. we do need to start over. And God is the mm. alpha and omega. It's alpha. So my kids are alpha. All of them are alpha. They are completely different. My six-year-old did a spot and she's a voice in an animation TV series and she got her first check and she came and she, she received her tax documents, right? And so they have to file it. And my wife has explained it to her. She said, dad, I'm not paying the government. <laughs> <laughs> she's six. And I said, good, go tell those 19, 18 and 19 year olds how to vote. Yeah. So, so mm-hmm. no, alpha, compli- any, any alpha parents, you know, they're different. Than, than Gen Z, very, very different. That, they are, yeah. That's funny. Yeah, yeah well, I, I did teach You've got my, alphas in your house? Yes, and I did teach my um, my 11-year-old that taxation is theft very early on, <laughs> and they did a project where they had to write a letter to our uh, one of the state senators, and in his I helped him craft the letter, and so his letter, I have a picture of it somewhere, and his did letter you get him was that like, bumper sticker for his tricycle? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. The we, letter did say, yeah. like, every once in a while, I'll drive around and I'll see somebody with that bumper sticker. Oh, you do? I'll, I'll just pull up n- next to him, you know, and yeah, yeah you're like, <laughs> so, so for the moms out are there, the same <laughs> Tuttle Twins books, get the yes. Tuttle Twins economic books. My yep, kids, we have read all them. of them, phenomenal. My yeah. kids are in the entrepreneurial program where they, they go to the fairs. I think you've known that. Yeah, they, they run a booth and they that's so cool. Market. So, so what was interesting on that poll was that young people said that the economy was their top priority. Now, Mm -hmm. I would say if you're talking to um, a larger scale of the average American, that immigration seems to be the top priority for them, Mm -hmm. Um, what's driving them to to the booths. And we don't have or the the polls. We don't have time to go into all of these stories. But I just want to read you the the headlines that I have here. Okay, right after Lake and uh, Riley. Right after that situation, yes. uh, here, here are some headlines. Honduran illegal immigrant arrested for rape of 14-year-old girl at knife point and separate stabbing incident in Louisiana. Then we have Salvadorian illegal immigrant arrested in Maryland in connection with murder of two-year-old. Then we have ICE arrest Guatemalan illegal immigrant convicted of sexually assaulting a child in Boston. I mean, the list goes on. And what, what we know is that Venezuela, like, just literally emptied their prisons and they were like, Go to America. They want you there. And now they're here. Yeah, 67%, the latest number is 67% recidivism of those that have committed crimes in other countries that come here. 67% will commit more violent crimes. Why wouldn't they? Did you see the guy the other day stealing the tow tow truck? 
No. <laughs> Driving around no. just wrecking American cars. No. Just smashing cars with a tow truck. Illegal. Finally got him. He was, you know, released by ICE. Notice to appear 2038 or something insane like that. <sighs> yeah. Yeah. So that's real. And, and people go, oh, you, you know, look. I was in Piedras Negras, and I'm walking around. I don't speak Spanish, and I'm, and I'm with our security detail, and I'm speaking to this one guy, and he says, you should be asking, where's all the homeless? And I said, I can't find any homeless in Mexico, in a Mexican city. And he said, no, we send them all across the border. They where's, go the, every day. where's the tipping point for this, where yeah. the nation says no more? I mean, we had this, this election. This, we, well, we so. had this visceral image of George Floyd, you know, with the cop uh, allegedly on his neck and, and that. And then, you know, we, I think probably all of us reacted that same way. We didn't know the circumstance uh, in, in totality, all, didn't have all the details, all the facts. So we all reacted that way. The whole country reacted negatively towards that image. Do we need to see one of these killings right. happen right. Uh, by an illegal in order for the nation to react and go, Okay, enough of that. No Steve, more. We have. Right. We have. We've sent footage to Tucker's producers at Fox when he was at Fox. They yeah. have it. They've got grave sites of kids. They've got the footage. We, my team, we've right. sent it to them. They lied to the American public. And I'm saying this, Fox News, liars, yeah. deceivers, serpents. I mean, they lied to the American people. If you don't get it from this show or from this network... I mean, you got to, people have to stop being fleeced. They're being lied to. It's political games. I mean, there's so much we can dive into on, on the rhinos inside our party that are not for us. It's because, so we went down to the Shoot That Blaze Originals documentary. Yeah. Um, we went down to the boy, went to Shelby Park. We talked about it for a little bit, you and I. Um, it's... It's basically just a big photo op. Yep. Nobody cares about it. It's, it's too politically advantageous on all sides, yeah. everywhere, for the media, for the Democrats, the Republicans. It's just as a, as a political weapon, it's much more valuable for them to keep using that weapon, but never actually solving it. Mm -hmm. Never. They don't care. Mm -hmm. And you, as you said, it's one of the biggest issues in this election cycle for a vast majority of the country. But I wonder how what they would actually think if they knew... Look, we know you care. The person that's going to come into office is probably not going to do a damn thing about it. And, and the most frustrating thing for me on that here in Texas is going to the polls and volunteering my time to try to talk to people. And they think that Governor Abbott has like st stood up to the federal government and he's done such a great job. And in a certain sense, he is sort of standing up to them, but he deserves far less credit for all of this. It's, it's pure optics. Dollar late and the minute short. That guy's done jack squat, okay? You can drive a nuclear bomb into this country in Hotspeth County, Texas. No one's watching. There's no patrol. Yeah. The cartel patrol our border. We don't patrol it. Abbott has done a dismal job. It's a teeny tiny He's area. allowed 20 million to come in with Biden, okay? Now all of a sudden you want to do things. I tell you something. Victor Avila will go down. At he will go and represent Texas in the U.S. Congress. He was shot for our country. His partner, Agent Zapata, died in the line of fire in Mexico, defending and protecting the border. We do have champions rising up. We do have folks stepping up that actually will go do things. It's not Abbott. It's a sham. Project Lone Star, please, come on. Yeah, Operation Lone Star Operation is, is Lone what bothers Star. me. Come on, please. They, they take far too much credit. Um, what is it, $20 billion or something? Right. And oh, yeah, show me. Right, and the studies have showed that like it hasn't actually done anything. So they want to take this victory lap, and I'm like, I don't really think you, like, maybe don't pat yourselves on the back too much uh, here. I, I, Go ahead, minor one. pushback. Um, the one thing that has done no. is, is put light on some of the sanctuary cities because they have been yes. forced to yes, yes. basically and, eat their words. So, so, that was good. So give him credit for the busing, although if you really wanted to um, – if you really wanted to send a message, bus them back to the freaking border, like okay, over so the border do you and give, dump here's, them off. Here's a question. Do you give credit to someone when they do their job? Mm -hmm. No, you got to go above your job. He's expected <laughs> to do his job. No, that's not enough. You're expected to do your job. You're expected to send him to Martha's Vineyard. You're also expected to close the border. You're Texas. Shut the thing down. I've been in the meetings with, with him, Jason. They duck and cover. They don't show up. They're not talking about actually shutting it down. What you want to see is a standoff. At this point, if Abbott did his job, I would give him a whole lot of credit. Yeah. I haven't seen it in a while. Because Jay, could Jay <laughs> isn't like, listen, Yaku, the bar's really low. Touche. The bar's I, low. I digress. Look what she did. Uh, it's amazing. <laughs> you, 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 your fork found your mouth. It's amazing. <laughs> um, all right, let's go ahead, and uh, we've got to take a quick break, but we want to thank our sponsor, uh, Preborn. So... 
if you haven't heard about Preborn yet, I, I want to tell you about Preborn. Um, they are rescuing babies. Hundreds of thousands of babies' lives have been saved uh, through ultrasound with Preborn. So when a woman is considering abortion, they visit a Preborn center and the woman gets to hear her baby's heartbeat and meet that precious baby on the ultrasound. And I know, you know, you guys have kids. It's like a life-changing moment, especially the first time. Um, you go in there and you hear the heartbeat and you see it and you're like, holy crap. Whatever changes. It's, it changes you. And so the woman at that time, you know, she's scared. She's been lied to by the left. But at that time, she it's like double the chance that she chooses life and she keeps that baby. And Preborn also is supporting these moms up until the baby is like two. So they're not just going to give them the ultrasound and send them packing. They're actually, they are supporting these women through all of this. And they're also seeing women come to, to Christ over this. So this is an amazing organization. Uh, it's $28 for an ultrasound. So could you spare $28 a month to save a baby? I hope that you can. And if you can, you can go to preborn.com slash Sarah. Donate however, you know, however much you are led, but know that you are saving babies. And I can't think of, you know, a more worthy cause than that. So it's preborn.com slash Sarah. So the same FBI who is targeting uh, independent journalists sitting right next to me for reporting the truth about what happened on January 6th is uh, now getting mocked online after a social media post from them. Yeah, there it is. It says <laughs> higher prices, dangerous uh, products and closing businesses. These are some of the impacts of organized retail theft. Um, so they've and then they've added, of course, you know, I mean, we know all of these young, attractive white women who are going around to all of these CVSs and Walmarts and everywhere, uh, just tucking in those products and heading out. That's what's happening. Well, this right? is, it's, it's obvious that the FBI is investigating them. I'm about to go investigate them because, I mean, they were hot. You know, like, why should the FBI get all the fun? I'm launching my own special investigation. On are you? Yeah, oh, okay. I'm looking for those two. <laughs> <laughs> just like really i mean this is this is uh the reverse of google gemini yeah <laughs> it's like well well hold on we can't show who's actually doing the uh all of these the stealing from all of these retail uh you know all the cvs's and all of these organizations these companies that have had to shut down in places like san francisco and uh but it's it's definitely white women yeah, for sure, right? Mm -hmm. yeah, no, no question. The same FBI, all you trolls out there, a couple of weeks ago, they notified us that they can't investigate child sex crimes because they don't have any money. This is an I'm on a call live. So we said, that's okay, the sheriffs will help us. So the sheriff stepped up. Yeah, no, we're in good shape here, guys. Law and order is running like a Formula One race car. It's just beautiful. Let's, uh, let's show some of the responses to, to the FBI if we could throw some of those up there. Yes, no, maybe so. All righty then, I uh, thought we did. So, um, but uh, Steve, yeah, you would come to expect something like this. I would, but I, you know, I'm at a position now where I have to be careful about what I say about the FBI. Yeah. No, not really. I was okay, I was gonna yeah, say, I, I mean, I was, you're already. <laughs> uh, I was actually at CPAC on Friday when my attorney called me. And in fact, I had just finished a, a J6 panel put on by the Epic Times and uh, Joe Hanneman from Epic Times and I went down to one of the restaurants and we were having, you know, a drink afterwards. And that's when my attorney called and said, okay, this is the real one. This is the big one. It's going to happen this time. And he explained to me that they were really serious this time. And, um, and so we went from there after a couple of drinks there, we went to the Lincoln dinner and where I continued to imbibe. And then <laughs> afterwards, I probably maybe had another one or two. So by the time that was all said and done, I began to drunk text my FBI ed agent. <laughs> I really did. <laughs> Uh, and of course, the next day, my attorney is going, I'm taking your phone away oh, from me. Oh, no. But, uh, but, but I, when I was told that it was only misdemeanors, uh, his name is Craig, by the way, and I, and I said- <laughs> Drunk text. Yeah, so I'm wearing. drunk, drunk texting, that? and I said, Craig, only misdemeanors? Is that the best you can do? Oh, no. Uh, yeah, so that's why the attorney said- Steve. Steve, you know they say gray and wise? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just going to leave it there. Yeah. yeah. So, so they, they can tell you the classification of the charges, but they don't tell you the actual charges. 
That's right? correct. That, well, they, they, uh, two and two, almost two and a half years ago when they first threatened me with prosecution, the assistant U S attorney actually told me the charges or told my attorney, the charges it was in the original email where I was notified that I was quote unquote going to be charged within the week. This time they're not telling me because they know that I will go public with that information. Now, technically the charges are still under seal, but they have assured us. But you've been told they're misdemeanors. Uh, they have they have assured my attorney that they are misdemeanors. We don't know which one yet. Um, and then, of course, all of that can change afterwards because once this is the, the initial process is done, and I've stood before the magistrate and I learn who my uh, DC judge is going to be, and we start the process of finding out what my restrictions are going to be on my travel and this or that and the other gag thing. Order, whether, maybe maybe mm -hmm. gag orders, whether they're going to take my guns, uh, so take, have me turn in my devices, whatever that ends up being, will then know what my future looks like going forward to a certain extent. But I will uh, have no uh, clue what the is going to happen after they offer me a plea deal because they're probably going to want to get this said and done with. They don't like what we've been doing, by the way. Oh, they don't like, no way. They don't like the Blaze coverage of this and, and all the other friendly media that we have piling on. And so they're going to want to get this over with. So that's why I expect the charging documents to be embarrassing. I expect them to hit me hard, as hard as they can within the misdemeanor realm, and that they're going to try and scare me into a quick plea deal. But if they... If I decide not to do that and I want to fight, then they can come back with a superseding indictment um, and hit me with one of those um, felonies like the 1512, um, uh, you know, interfering with the or obstructing the you know business of government. Bastards. Charge. Bastards. Are you, are you expecting to go through discovery? Um, I, I'm not going to need discovery. I've, I've, Them what's that? Discovery on you, ceasing devices and going, have you been through discovery? Or no, uh, they have not done that yet, but they could. This, these are all the things, all of the unknowns that we have. I really, we don't know what's going to happen Friday morning because obviously the local, uh, uh, U.S. attorney here is receiving his or her instructions from D.C. right now. Yeah. yeah. Um, all right. We got to take a quick break. We'll be back. All right, make sure to keep up with uh, with Steve, who is just dropping bombs all over social media uh, at any given point in time. Um, so make sure that you follow his, I still say Twitter. You can't stop me. I'm still going to say Twitter. Follow him on Twitter. Um, give them, I, I know we have it, but give them the your handle. Yeah, it's at TPC. For USA, TPC, the number four USA. Okay, TPC for USA, um, and then Jason as well. You can follow him uh, on Twitter. You can't make me say X. I'm still going to say Twitter. Okay, at Jason Buttrell. Yes, ma'am. All right, and then Yakubuyans. You can follow him on social media. You can subscribe to the Bottom Line. But what I'd really like you to do is go to helpjbm.org. Did I get that right? Thank you. That is his ministry, and um, that helps him do what he does, which is fight sex trafficking. Um, so I would say a very worthy cause. So make sure that you support him over at helpjbm.org, and uh, we will see you guys tomorrow.